brother Holst Gracie in the house. Oh, yeah, my man. <laughs> Get you came here ten years ago when we first opened up uh, here in Burbank. You know, amazing. Yeah. yeah, I remember like this was like yesterday. <laughs> you came back like five five years after that, right? <laughs> five years. Every five years, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make it quicker. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> And then uh, we're just kind of telling stories about like the first time I met you, like Mall Easton, like I yeah. met you in uh, Florianopolis. Uh, yeah, great times. You were like probably like eighteen or something at the time. Yeah, seventeen. Yeah, seventeen, eighteen, somewhere around there. Just turning eighteen. Same, maybe. same size. Same size. <laughs> yeah, because I remember on the Pan Ams, I turned probably I was seventeen because uh, that was the summer. Summer, yeah. It was the summer, summer there, so it was around. January, February, um, and my birthday in July, so it was 17, because I turned. Oh, we have the same birthday, right? July 14th? July 14th, that's yeah. Right, that's right, that's exactly. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good people are born in this day. That's right. <laughs> Julius Caesar was born in. Uh, the Bastille Day too, right? Yes. The Independence Day of France. Independence Day. Um, I might have, uh, not sure about Julius Caesar, but I know he's a cancer for sure from July, but. Yeah. Let's go, man. We're here. This uh, I'm here. I'm gonna. You're gonna go get your dad's medal from 40 years ago. Yeah, yeah I'm excited about this. You know, uh, long time coming. Been trying to do this, you know, for a while. COVID hit us. Yeah, Just put a little delay on the on the plan. Now I'm here. Yeah. So the story is right. Like your dad won the the Sambo Pan Americans. He got the gold medal. 40 yeah. years ago and he had to leave so bob picked it up for him yeah. and then uh and then you, you know, your dad passed yeah i think bob was telling that uh as i was watching on uh mike's documentary the something to do with the metal they didn't have the metal there was like a problem with the okay the governing body and then when bob finally got the metal my father wasn't here so he kept it man 40 years 40 years i'm yeah. excited to meet bob you never met him. I never met him. Never met him. I heard great things about him, but never met him. Yeah, you taught the Americana supposedly to the you know to yeah, and your I mean your dad was like you know wrestling whatever the sambo right to to add to yeah he always my dad was always like a, a natural competitor he always wanted to compete and these days you'll be loving right because like you have competitions every weekend you know you can figure out like the tournament to compete every weekend but on his time you know once a year twice a year you know i have to try I remember you know my uncle's telling stories i had to get on the bus you know 20 30 hours on the bus to go compete and this and that but so because he loved competing so he meant okay we're gonna have a judo competition okay let's go we're gonna have wrestling let's go we're gonna have sambo let's go you know so and he started training other the other the rules a lot of times he didn't even even know the full rules of the event uh, but yeah, he started to adapt and use some techniques, you know. Yeah, you follow kind of in this, you 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 wrestled at the Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Like how many years ago was that now? Good question, man. Good question. Maybe 16, 2016, 17. Five years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, blink it's of like an eye. Blink of an eye. Yeah. What What made you want to do that? I I always like wrestling and stuff, right? Yeah. I did I competed in judo. I always trained wrestler wrestling with great wrestlers. And uh the Olympics in Brazil was gonna come. Mm. And my wrestling coach he he said, Holly, you might have a shot at this. Why don't you give it a try? You know, um have an, you have a natural talent. Uh you qual maybe you qualify to Brazil sometimes, but the 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 hosting country they can put like one athlete per weight class, mm -hmm. um, you know. So I said yeah, so he put the he sparked the plug. Um, it was a wrestling coach in Brazil. No, here. Oh, here uh, in Hamid, yeah, in New York, Hamid uh, Kermesha, an Iranian, one of the best coaches, you know, in wrestling. When I tell wrestlers that uh, hmm. he's my coach. I still say he's my coach, and yeah. I haven't trained him in a little bit, but I consider him like a life coach, you know, like a, a lifetime coach. Um, people are like, no way. Does this guy teach you? You know, so he's like, he's in a, he's in a great story as well. And uh, yeah, we started training, and then we started competing. I remember my first 
two wrestling events, I the only rules I knew was like take down, don't get taken down. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and don't and, and don't put your back on the mat. So there was like there were two rules that uh that I knew. Yeah. And you know, starting to understand more the sport. Like the escapes and the the escape the, and stuff. You know, I took it like pretty seriously. I think for a good year or so I was competing a lot, I took second in nationals in Brazil. Mm. You know, it's it was fun. It was definitely fun and definitely made me a a better teacher. Definitely made me a better jiu jitsu guy. Nice, yeah. Yeah, wow. Abu Dhabi, yeah, you've done pretty much everything, right? Wrestling, Abu Dhabi, uh, uh, I mean, of course, you should say, you know, with the gi, but um, the, you fought, fought, how many fights did you do? Uh, 12. 12, yeah. 12 MMA fights. Yeah. Yeah. Even pro wrestling. Pro, you did pro wrestling? Yeah, you did pro wrestling with my cousin Daniel in Japan, even that. Oh, wow. How yeah. did that happen? Uh, I think I, when I, one of, during one of my fights in uh, in Japan, I think if when I fought for Inoki Bombaye, the event mm -hmm. was like mm -hmm. a, a end of the year event. I think somewhere around New Year's, and uh, it was a it was a mixed card because it was some pro wrestling matches and some MMA. And uh, I think somebody asked me, "Would you do pro wrestling? Would you do?" So yeah, why not? You know, if you ask me this, like you know, like ten, fifteen years ago, I mean. It was probably like five or ten years ago, closer to that. But um, if you ask me, like you know, when I was like before I was a black belt, I was like, hell no, I'm not doing fake fight. <laughs> but then I realized, man, this is entertainment. Yeah, you know, it's not like everybody knows these days. It's like entertainment, you know. Even WWE, cha you know, actually man, WWF changed to WWE, right? Right, right, right. World wrestling entertainment. Um, it's like, in, you know, they ask me to do a movie, you yeah, know, and yeah. they lose a fight, they throw, you know, it's like, you know, it's, so that's how I approached it. it was who, did, who did you go in? You, you, Daniel? My cousin Daniel. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. My like cousin a, Daniel and I, so it was fun. It was like, you know. They pay, they pay you, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, man, you know, like, don't, don't worry. You already know the outcome, so you don't, you don't, you don't stress about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's, yeah. Man. Yeah, my first, uh, well, I, you, me, me, I went down to Florianopolis with them all, you know, my, was like my, like an older brother to me, my, like my brother. And then, uh, and then I remember seeing you compete with him in the finals of 96, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's cool, man. To see you like grow up too, you know, over the years, me too. Right. <laughs> yes. You know, and I think we all kept in touch since, right. Yeah. Um, you know, our, our even before we were we're black belts. Our path crossed uh, multiple times. You went to to Florida, to, to to Belo Horizonte. Yeah, right? came came to Rio a few times too. Uh, I was there at the time as well. You know, even though like we traveled a lot, the world, you know, our lives took us in different spots. But we always crossing paths. Man, I went to I went to Russia to do a, a, a summer camp one time, mm -hmm. and uh, I went out to uh, it was like uh, some bar, you know. And uh, I think Igor and Gregor were there. Your brothers were, wow. were there, just yeah. randomly. Wow. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, like, like what? what? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I think, yeah, the- uh, It's maybe, like a club, club bar or something, tour. you know? With Andre Montero too, and they had another guy mm -hmm. with him. Uh, yeah, I don't remember, it was just, just random. Yeah, I think they did like a little, a little tour all over, like, you know, Europe one, one year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, all those, all the tournaments, all those things are like, like uh, reunions, right? Yeah. For, for. Always, always. But yeah, but to meet each other like this without the tournament being. Uh, yeah. <laughs> have, you know, it's very, you know, such a coincidence. Man, what's your earliest memory in jujitsu growing up? Of me training or like on, on the academy environment? Jujitsu, yeah, just jujitsu. I remember like myself and my father's, uh, when I was, I don't know, my father was alive still, maybe like three, two and a half, mm -hmm. three years old, um, in his academy, running around in his academy. Um, I remember like it was like yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, they, used to, they used to have like a, a little ledge around the mat and uh, people used to put their bags there and stuff. And I, I guess when I started to run around too much, used to pick me up and put a sitting over there on top. Then I had to be like, you can't stay quiet because I you know, had to sit still because 
was afraid to fall. <laughs> and that gym was with Carl Gracie, right? Yeah, it was the gym that they shared. You know, um, it was two different businesses, but they shared the, 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 the space. My father had uh, the top mat, which I think is a bit, was a bigger one, uh, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then uh, Carlson had on Tuesday, Thursday. I don't know if they did anything Saturday, Sunday. Probably not. <laughs> no, no, not at that time in Brazil. You know, and then they in the and they had like a, a secondary mat downstairs, and they were alternating. Yeah, wow! Like people are worried about the competition, right, between different people, but they're like on the same mat, different yeah. days, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And there was like I, I guess it's probably like one of the maybe what made like them, you know, two great generations of fighters came out of the, that environment, right? I guess like competition yeah yeah <laughs> you know you hear oh the guy was standing you know yesterday he was killing him in this mat so let's pick it up the pace yeah you know or even like oh dear guys are murdering each other downstairs <laughs> and the stories are closer right yeah now everything like you know something happens here like in five minutes people already know in the other side of the world with through internet but mm -hmm. back then right news would travel a lot slower, slower yeah yeah, and then and then when your father passed, like Carl Gracie Jr. took over, took over the the his his students, right? Yeah, he he started teaching there for a little bit. I don't know how long was he teaching there for, but then he moved to to Baja, and then he founded uh, Gracie Baja. And where did you where did you go in that that time when he moved to Baja? Man, I. You're raised by all of your yeah, family. Yeah, and, and, and that, I think there's like a little period in my life, I don't know if it's, that I don't really remember. Mm. You know, maybe like when I was, I don't know. There was like, a, I remember there was like a, a, I remember I was training with my Uncle Helium, you know, in Ipanema, as a yellow belt. Uh, but like right when my father died, I don't know, you know, probably I probably wasn't even training, you know. That time where I was, I don't remember. How old are you? Uh, how old when was I? Like, when, yeah, when yeah. You, my father, my father passed. Uh, I was about to be four years old. Mm, wow. You know, so um, yeah. So you know, people ask me, "When was your first day training?" I don't know. I can't remember. I don't remember myself as a white belt. I don't remember like looking. No, okay, you know, I don't have the picture in. Uh, in my but you remember playing in the gym just, with your yeah, dad? Yeah, I remember, like, I have memories of, like, very vivid memories of, you know, being yellow belt. You know, training with Helium and, but then, yeah. In Ipanema. In Ipanema, yeah. When did, uh, when did, um, um, Helium move down to Florianopolis? Yeah, and then eventually he moved to Florianopolis, and then I started training, um, I trained at Carlson's for a little bit too. Mm. I trained them with Hoyler. Um, I think I got a little bit of, I think he didn't, um, there was a point that he he was teaching Gracie Baja as well. I think he moved, I don't know if he moved like right before he, because I remember my grandfather um, bought a house in uh, Baja Grande, which is like, you know, like you go to Baja, and it's like another 30 minutes or 40 minutes from Baja. So I think they all moved Pass there. Pass Recreo and stuff? Pass Recreo. Okay. You know, it's like like you pass Recreo, then you make like a, a right, and then you go like, in, you know, inland a little bit more. So um, I think they were all there. So I think he didn't start teaching in Gracie Baja too. And I lived in the the south side of uh, of Rio. So it was like, so I started training with Carlson and I trained with Hoyler a little bit in Maita. And then Hanzo started teaching in... Uh, Right by my apart, by my house, my apartment that I used to live. So I used to train, start training. In Ipanema? No, it was in, uh, I used to live in Jardim Botanico. Okay. You, you know? Yeah, 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 of course. And he was teaching like in Ipica, the, you know, a club there, a social club. And um, uh, where people do like horse jumping and stuff like that. Like, uh, and uh, he was teaching there in the morning. So I was going there in the morning. The wealthy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the nice. And then I started That's hooking it. up with Hanzo. Then I started find, uh, I started going to a nighttime. This was, this was, I was already, you know, like 14, uh, 13, 14. Um, and then I started training uh, at Gracie Baja as well. And then Hanzo would give us a, 
he was giving us a ride back, you know, mm. home. So I was going there, taking a ride back. Um, yeah. And then he moved to U.S., right? And then, uh, then he also moved to the U.S. Exactly. He moved to the U.S. Um, I kept training at Gracie Baja for a little longer. Um, yeah, man, man, I'm getting old because it's hard, it's, it's hard to... To the be, dates, to, right? To, the dates. To the dates, you know, you to write the, a, you the, the right write, timeline, you know. You if need I to write a book. Exactly. You need to write a book. And uh, and then I, and then in between, he didn't move, right, to Florianopolis. And uh, and then when I was 16, 17, I went to to live to live with him. I went to spend, like, a, some the summer vacation there. And uh, when we came back... When we came back, um, my ma uh, he convinced my mother to let me to let me move there for good. How old were you at the time? I think it was 17, 17. 16, 17. 17. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because I remember then six months later, when I, then I started moving there, then I moved there, um, we, it was a Pan Ams. What is uh what does your uncle Hillian mean to you? Hey, he was like a father. Yeah. You know, he knew he's like a like a father to me. I remember him, you know, always on the weekends, you know, picking me and my brother mm. to go to his, you know, mountain house, you know, ride horse, spend the weekend with him. I was training with him, you know. So it's like when my father died, he kind of like stepped up too. Mm. You know, he was like a very important, like a male figure. All yeah. of my, you know, of course, Enzo, yeah. of you course. know, lots of those guys, you know, always have them as heroes. I see my, see, you know. That was my perception when I first met you guys, the way he looked looked out for you guys, like like his kids, yeah. Yeah, no, like he is son. like- I not, not that any, all the your other family members don't, you know, feel yeah. like that. No, Hogan, he's, uh, his son, he's like my little brother. Yeah. He's my little brother. And then Hanzo, I mean, you know, how many years did you, I mean, your, New Jer your school's in New Jersey. Yeah. What's the name of the, the, the city? Uh, Old Bridge. Old Bridge. Yeah. Where's that near? This near, uh, I mean, for people who don't know Jersey, yeah. like Rutgers University, you know, like New Brunswick, there's um, about 10, 15 minutes okay, from there. Okay, gotcha. And so what... What, uh, how long have you been in New York? It's been a long, many yeah. years now. 18 years since yeah, I, I arrived in New York. Uh, I mean, 18 years in America, in the US, mm. right around now, around this time, mm. 18 years ago, I came to California, uh, to, to North Cal with my cousin Caesar. Um, I was there. 2004, right? They were saying. 2003. Three. End yeah. of 2003. Those Abu Dhabi trials. Yeah, because I remember. Yeah, because I remember it was right after. Uh, it was around, you know, a little before Thanksgiving. So, you know. And um, yeah, I was there um, with him. Uh, then uh, I think Daniel was going to fight in Pride. They asked me to, to go to, to New York. Um, but then actually the fight fell through at the time, but I stayed there for a couple of weeks. My brothers were there. Uh, I moved to the US with the goal of fighting pride. Mm. And then Hanzo convinced me to say, bro, you gotta stay here. You gotta stay here. Everybody everybody was there, you know, training to fight in yeah. pride. Rodrigo, yeah. uh, Hyan, Hanzo himself, Cachorrão. Yeah, Ricardo Almeida, Ed yeah. Sarah. You know, everybody was, you know, so it's like, bro, you got to stay here. You know, this is what's, you know, things are happening here. I said, yeah, uh, enough said. You know, my brothers were there as well. Um, Did you guys move together at the same time? When you, when you no, came to No, they US? were there before. Oh, Igor, uh, Igor, came before. Igor came to the U.S. before, but he went straight to New York. He probably like moved like a, maybe like six months mm. prior to me. And then uh, I moved to... California, but when I was in New York for a few days, for a, few, a couple of weeks actually, mm. they convinced me to stay. And that was it. Yeah. Eighteen years later. Yeah. <laughs> you the the I lived in. I went to high school in New York, and I remember the cold, the cold winters. You know. Oh man, it's cold. It's cold. It is cold. It's yeah. That's one thing that's brutal. 
of the northeast yeah that's beautiful you know also i love the i love the city i love the you know i, I love everything about it yeah you know? uh me too you know i think it's like i had you know and I mean, you've been in Rio, right? You know, Rio's like this, like amazing yeah. city, right? It's an amazing city by the beach. I used to go to, I used to go to the beach every day. Uh, so, and to me, it was all. And you know, my grandmother was; she lives in New York for I don't even know how many years now. Oh, wow. You know, six, sixty years, sixty-five, seventy years. I don't even know at this point. Um, but New York never attracted me. I guess because from Brazil, you know, nature, this and that, and it's like in you know, New York, like concrete jungle. Um, but when I moved, I fell in love with it. Mm. I really fell in love with New York. You know, it was awesome. Yeah, right down the street from, you know, Madison yeah. Square Garden. And yeah, but like now I've been there, done that, so now I'm out. I'm in Jersey now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I, I appreciate my space. <laughs> Man, uh, the time with... Uh, um, sorry, the I shared a post of Hanzo, you know, like he just, man, he's always inspiring me, you know, since I was, when I yeah. first started Jiu Jitsu pretty much, you know, with his first MMA fight, like yeah. the Valtudo, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was just like, it's like he's like from another. Uh, plus that, right, you know, being around him, you know what I mean? It makes like a big difference, you know. It was it was great to be around Hanzo, like the, it's been great mm -hmm. to be around Hanzo all these like almost two decades. Yeah, what is uh, what does he mean to you when you think about you know just all the all the years and all the things that he's done? And Hanzo, all Hanzo, Hanzo, like he's literally the guy who who gets you know takes the shirt off his back to give it to you, literally, you know. So he's that type of person, like you know, he's the type of person that when you're with him, you're like, man, no, nothing's gonna go wrong because the guy's so positive and he's always thinking like you know, man. This, Everything's gonna go right, you know? Everything's going right. Don't worry about it, you know? Like, so it's, yeah. The outcome is always great to him. So he, he makes you believe. He makes you believe. He's, he's the, Hans is probably the most confident person I ever met. Even if he, even if whatever. Even the odds are stacked against him. <laughs> <laughs> over and over and over, right? Over and over and over. You know, there's like this story that I like to say. Um, to tell and I remember when during the IFL days Hensel's team like the pit, the New York Pitbulls were gonna fight Pat Militich yeah. in uh, in Iowa like in Moline and uh, and Hensel's gonna be the main event fighting uh, Pat Militich and the arena was packed crowded you know at the time like everybody was wearing yellow because you know the, the team Hawk. color was yellow everybody wearing Iowa, yellow Hawkeyes wrestling and yeah you know yeah. exactly all like and then I remember somebody walked in the, some of, of, of our team walked in the, the, the locker room and go, man, there's not a, there's not an empty seat in there. The place is packed and kind of like, but he was kind of like a little bit like, you know, feeling the pressure a little bit. He has a look at him, man, can you believe how many people are going home disappointed tonight? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. You know, and you guys are all nervous for him, right? Yeah. And then you know, he like says that, and you're like, man. Fuck, man. <laughs> you know, we almost forgot who we were with. I remember that. I remember the. I, yeah, it was the, a great fight. Whole, it was a great fight, great event. We had lots of fun. You know, it's like, I mean, I was, you know, when when I saw him winning, right? It's almost like, man, I get so happy for him because he does so much for everybody. You know, he's like he puts. He sacrificed his own, you know, I remember when he was fighting pride, you know, the whole Team Gracie thing, like he would sacrifice his training, you know, his sleep and everything to, you know, arrange fights for everybody, take care of everybody, you know what I mean? He always putting people in front of him. Uh, and when he actually has like a great win like that, it's so like, man, it's like, you know, it feels, it feels great because he deserves that. Yeah. Because he really gives back. Yeah. He doesn't give back. He gives first. <laughs> yeah. I remember seeing the Gorgim, all just all the guys that. Yeah. It's like everybody won, but even bigger than that, right? Yeah. Man, the, the you know, the one picture, right, that he had, like, for the longest time was the fight with Sakuraba. You know, and that's the picture he posted on. I yeah, he made posted a post. just the other day, a couple right? of days. I shared that post. Yeah, that I was the one I was talking about. You know, like, uh, 
like what is that what does that explain that you know it's of, of sakuraba getting him in the you know at the very end right just be kind of going against the odds over and over and over yeah and that was like the biggest fight at the time you know uh you know he had beaten i forgot who else like a couple other guys gracie's or yeah, something Euler. Mm -hmm. and uh yeah and then uh, Hanzo was the big, you know. Yeah. Hanzo was, uh, and it was, you know, Hanzo was doing so great in that fight because, you know, was I was I remember watching that I wasn't there, but I was watching it uh, at home. You know, it was like, man, it was, it was a great fight. You know, the fight was great. Yeah. Hanzo was yeah. doing really well. You know, Sakuraba was the man. You know, especially in Japan, to beat mm -hmm. him. You know, you know, sometimes when. You, we're fighters, you know, sometimes some things could get us like in, in our zone, yeah. you know what I mean? Help us boost our, he was there fighting for him with his crowd behind him, you know, coming off like win after win. He was, Sakurai was the man to beat in the, the pride that time. And uh, he had everything going for him and Hans was doing awesome. You yeah. know, Hans was usually like, uh, always very talented, but you know, sometimes you see his fights, he's towards the end, he starts to like, you know, lack steam a little bit. Um, um, but with this fight, he wasn't, you know, he was like in a great shape. He was like, at, you know, going on. He was yeah, like, yeah, everything. Yeah. he kept pushing the Prepare. pace. He was pushing the pace, you know? So I was like, man, this is good because, you know, like we knew that uh, even if uh, you went to distance, you know, like most likely, <laughs> this, you know, they were gonna give it in to, Japan, yeah. you know, to, to Sakuraba. And uh, he had a legit shot, man. You know, he was like, uh, to me, he was ahead and winning. Mm -hmm. And that, sh you know, unfortunately, the thing happened. But the thing is, how he owns it, you know, like he yeah. put the, he he put that picture in his gym. Yep, it's there. You know, like it's like different, right? Talk about yeah. being vulnerable and just owning. Yeah, you know, like just like what does that say? What does that say to you yeah. when you see that? It's, uh, at one point, that was the only picture right. of himself in his gym. Right. There was no other pictures of him. That was the only one. I think it was the one, not necessarily that one, but was the one that uh, I think he has his arm already on uh, on a sling. Mm. You know, and uh, you know, t talking to Sakuraba. Yeah, talking to Sakuraba. You know, I man, it's like sometimes I have a hard time watching the fights I lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know what I mean? I'm like, wow. You know, it's yeah. like, <sighs> but not him. Not him. He's like front and center or in the middle yeah. of the gym. He was showing yeah. all of his students, everybody. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, exactly. Yeah. Just that, that post, you know, it's like the picture of him, the Kimura and his arm popping out, right? Yeah. Of, uh, of the socket from the position. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I don't know. Like the, the, he's on another level, you know? He's on another level for sure. He's like, you know, he's. The man. The man. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever, wherever, whenever. Exactly. Fighting on Twitter, doesn't right? <laughs> doesn't care. Oh, doesn't care. Yeah. Doesn't care. He's like for the sea. <laughs> That's literally him for the sea. <laughs> yeah, for the sea. Yeah. For the sea. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Man, let's fast. Let's go, let's go to the the Bob Bob Anderson. You know, um, since today's today's the day is gonna give you the the medal. Uh, what does that mean to you? It means a lot, man. It means a lot because it's very hard to find words to describe this uh, this experience. Because I grew up hearing the stories. Mm. I hear. I grew up heard, hearing the stories of this giant American wrestler who went to Brazil, you know, to train, and you know. So it was amazing, you know, amazing to to have this opportunity. Mm. Right, I didn't even know about this medal until I saw the, the little documentary. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't even know wow. the, the medal existed. You know, I remember as a kid, you know, after my mother, my my father passed, a box of filled with medals, and I regret it because when you're a kid, like you play with it, right, you know, you I, probably, like, it. I probably lose, yeah. lost, damaged it. I don't know, maybe my mother hid somewhere, and it's like hidden, it's so hidden now that you know, we might have a might have a hard time finding it, but this might be the only, only and last uh, medal of him, you know? <laughs> so it's me, it means a lot. The, the, like, uh, you know, yeah, uh, how did that, the documentary, how did that, what's, uh, who, who, how did that, how did you see it? What was the, what was the process of seeing that video? Uh, Michael was telling me the the director, right, and the producer of it. Yeah, was telling me a little bit about the story. Yeah, he. Um, 
I watched it as people, man, it's funny because um, people send me stuff all the time. Mm. Like, you know, watch this, have you watched that? You know, this and that and blah, blah, blah. So people start sending me this link, this link to YouTube, like somebody sent me the link to YouTube. Mm. And I said, okay, I'll watch it later. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Okay, I watch it because you know I basically watch everything out there about my father. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like you know, okay, it's probably just going to be the same footage, same mm -hmm. stuff. Like you know, read, you know. So I was like, okay, I will watch it later. And then somebody else sent me. Then somebody else sent me. Mm -hmm. Then somebody else. Somebody else. The thing start popping. Every yeah. almost like everybody I knew started to send me. I said, man, wait, I gotta watch that. Mm -hmm. Let me see what's this. What's this about? You know. Then I start watching. Was it was awesome? I, you know, it was very entertaining. Uh, the way it was like the story uh, was brought, you know, like some videos, some cool graphics, um, you know, and then I was like, wow. And I think Mike, uh, I'm pretty sure he was the one who, who got in touch with me. I can't remember exactly, like if I got in touch with him, if he got in touch with me. Uh, a bunch of people sent you the video. I saw yeah. it too, right? I yeah, saw you, it might, too. You, you might have sent me the video you're Probably, too. yeah. <laughs> you, might, you might be one of the... <laughs> you see this? <laughs> you know? And it's funny because I was telling him, uh, Mike, over the phone, they're like, man, people still send me the video. Have you watched this? Have you got the medal? You know what I mean? So it's like every now and then, like it's just, I swear to God, just like maybe last week or a couple weeks ago, somebody sent me. Today's the day, right? Today's the day. Yeah, congrats, man. You know, it's a... Uh, I'm gonna drive down there too. Someone, to, I want to see Bob. You know, he's yeah. one of my mentors, right? When I first yeah. moved to LA, um, co coached me, and and uh, we did that grap that feel of grappling. Do you remember that? Yeah, they were trying to get into the Olympics or something. Yeah, um, and uh, he was teaching me how to suplex, and just, you know, spent time, spent a lot of time with him. So yeah, and his health isn't so. You know, he has a like a rare heart thing going on right now. Yeah, so we gotta make this happen. Yeah, yeah, big honor. You know, now, yeah, I was supposed to do to do this, like you know. Yeah. Couple of years ago, yeah, Before we were squaring up everything. Now, you know, we we're, we're uh, talking about uh, maybe bringing Bob to uh, a Kasai event. You know, like do the whole thing, like you know, publicly. Mm -hmm. You know, like but it's different plan, but it's okay. Yeah, same outcome. Yeah, we got Michael. Michael here. You know, <laughs> ready yeah. to go, catch the moment. You know, and I'm, yeah. I'm just an honor to be a student of the Gracies and your family and. And then just you know, just oh, this this be see a little bit from the from the outside, you know the yeah this moment. So it's a big honor to. Yeah. My brother wanted to come here to be here as well, but our schedules were like lining up. He's busy too. He now he's back in the scene competing, teaching seminars, traveling, and like man, I said Igor, I just yeah, because we don't know right yeah, next year. Gotta go, knows, yeah, gotta go. Cannot delay this anymore. Yeah. Well, awesome man! Congrats for everything thank you for your friendship oh man thank you for your friendship thank brother. you for your friendship brother my man it means a man, lot to me you know it's the man yeah a lot of years man, man. brother you no know, very nice to to come back see you again you know spend some time um yeah all that thank you man